What do you got there? Hall of Fame WWE ring. It was issued to Paul Bear. WWE, the sort of wrestling thing. <laughs> sort of wrestling thing. My kids thought it was the greatest thing in the world, and then I would tell my kids it's fake, and they'd go, shut up, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, this ring was issued to Paul Bear's family. He was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame after he passed away. I became friends with the family over the last few years, and they gave the ring to me. I want to sell the ring today to get as much money as I can for me and the family that it belongs to. Paul Bearer, uh, that was like the Undertaker's manager or something like that? Correct. They put like white powder on his face to make him look really like macabre, and he had like an urn he walked around with. He did, that. he had an urn, yeah. Right? An Maybe urn, ashes, yeah. he would like throw it on the Undertaker, and all of a sudden the Undertaker got all strong, and it was some mysterious thing like that. And it was really fun to watch, it really was. I can't imagine the orthopedic bills. Yeah, because because even though it's choreographed, I mean, these guys still really get hurt. They really have to work They're out. They're still there. breaking tables and breaking chairs, and yeah. Yeah, they get hit in the head with sledgehammers and just walk <laughs> away. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's really really cool. How much are you looking for? I want as much as I can get, but I think it'd be close to twenty-two thousand. No, um, the, I don't see that there. I, I've sold Super Bowl rings for less money. You know, I, I'd give you four grand for it. Uh, I've been offered more than $4,000 for it already. It, it's a weird thing, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I deal a lot in sports rings, but this is not a sports ring. This is a sort of sports ring. It's really neat that he's from the Hall of Fame and all these other things, and that's why I'm offering four grand, but I, I, I don't see anything more than that. Thank you for the offer. I'm going to hold on to it. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Uh, sometimes you're better off to uh, walk away. Hearing the offer of $4,000 made me want to pull out some WWE moves and throw somebody off the top ropes. Hey, what do you got here? I have an autographed Macho Man Randy Savage costume, pants, hat, shirt. Oh, yeah, brother. That was Hulk Hogan. Just, oh, yeah, was Macho Man. Oh. Oh, yeah. I brought in a signed Macho Man Randy Savage costume, shirt, hat, and pants. This costume is great. I'm selling my Macho Man costume for $7,500. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. Randy Savage was probably one of the biggest wrestlers in the 80s and 90s. And then luckily for him, he got in right at the right time. You know, before his era, wrestling was just kind of like a regional thing, and it was almost like a carnival stage show that would come into town. Vince McMahon basically turned it into a national giant thing where, I mean, there was cartoons, there was action figures. I mean, you know, the wrestling company that he worked for is still like one of the highest licensed merchandise companies there is today. So how'd you get it? I was his wedding photographer and he died a year and 10 days after the ceremony and I had been very close to him and very close to his wife and I never asked him for an autograph, I never took a selfie with him, but I wanted something and she said, go back in the costume room and pick out anything you want. Oh wow. And this is what I picked out. So do you know if this was ever worn in a match? I can tell you this, this costume is as it was given to me, it is beat up. It's filthy, dirty if you can see. The fact of the matter is, is, more than likely it was. I mean, these guys were working 200, 250 days a year. It wasn't just the matches you saw on TV. They were actually on the road all the time. Did you like uh, the Macho Man? Because I know you had a Hulk Hogan pillow in your bed. When you were I liked the Macho up. Man when he wasn't beefing with Hulk Hogan. Was that what you want me to say, Chuck? He's a big fan. I can tell. Of wrestling in general. So how much are you looking to get out of it? Uh, I'm gonna ask $7,500. $7,500, okay. Um, so I'm a little perplexed here because... I like how you work that rest and then move into it. No, that's a suplex, chum. Oh, okay. Let me make a phone call and see if I can get a buddy down here to check it out. All right. I have no problem with an expert coming in. This costume is great. I'm ready to take these guys down for a good price. What do you guys got? Macho Man, Randy Savage, autograph, ring attire. Oh, that guy is literally one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. One of the most well-known, at least. Boom, don't hurt his feelings. He's a big Hulkamania fan. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Hulk Hogan, obviously the most well-known, but Randy Macho Man Savage is literally right up there. 
Okay, so the first thing, obviously, I want to do is just kind of look at the signature itself, take a look at this under magnification. And the good thing about this is the fabric usually holds up pretty well with this stuff. And you can see the regular thread, and then you see the ink. So, live signature. Next thing, obviously, his signature is now pretty heavily forged. His autograph was pretty simple, and this is pretty much what we're looking at. Really easy, signified by two large M's. So, Macho Man. That's kind of what you get out of them. It's the same exact thing here. And same thing here. So it is legit, huh? Absolutely, yeah. This is, a, this, is, this is really a pretty awesome set. So what do you think it's worth? So based on everything I've seen here, are you able to put this into a time frame or an event? Obviously, you know, the mega powers were around for a long time. Um, when do you think this was from, or do you know if it's from any event? I have no direct knowledge of where it came from, but I believe this was very early on in his career because I did my research. I could find no photographs of him wearing this costume anywhere. Okay. Here's the thing I would say, guys. Uh, on the low end, $7,000. If you could match it to an event or something he wrestled in or wore this, I think this could be nine dollars or $10,000. Beautiful. How do you feel, man? He just dropped a flying elbow on you. I should have asked for more. <laughs> nope, Steve, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, great seeing you. There's no doubt in my mind this would be great for the shop. You've got Randy Macho Man Savage. I think if they put that in the shop, it's going to fly right out of here. What are you thinking? I, three grand. That's not going to be enough. I came in asking for 7,500. And it's worth 7000 as it sits right now, according to your expert. Six grand is, is where I would be right now. I'll do five grand. I won't do five grand. I'm going to stick at, at six grand. I've never offered $5,000 for a piece of, of wrestling memorabilia in my entire life. I have to stick at five. I want to think for a second. I'll do five grand. Deal. Show me over him up over there. I've seen you go the miles for Halloween, but wow, that's a lot of money for a Halloween costume. You're really gonna be the macho man this year. I'll meet you right over there. You can write it up. At least it'll look good next to your Hulk boots. I'm taking that $5,000 because this really just sat in the box all these years, and I can use the money to buy some new camera gear. What are you wearing? Macho man Randy Savage. Full ring attire? Oh, yeah! These are amazing. You wrestled with Hulk Hogan? They were on a tag team called the Mega Powers, and this is a suit from, you know, that tag team. You know, Corey's favorite wrestler was Hulk Hogan. You remember Corey had the Hulk Hogan pillow? Um, I did not have a Hulk Hogan pillow. Yes, you did. He used to sit on your bed. Oh, his wrestler buddy? That's what it was, a wrestler buddy. What, you're like what, probably like 10 years old when you had the wrestler buddy, and then you had it for years, which was, I found a little weird. <laughs> he used to pretend wrestled it every night. <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I got him the uh, I got a picture of Hulk Hogan, and then I signed to my Hulkamaniac, and then I signed it Hulk Hogan. I remember so, that. It hung up forever. It was like his prized possession until he was like 16. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're a Hulkster. What can they say? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Rick, this package just came in. I think I know what it is. Uh, yeah, what's that? You're gonna love this. So do you remember when Corey was little and I got him the autographed picture from Hulk Hogan? It wasn't exactly an autographed picture from Hulk Hogan. Well, I know I signed it myself, but it was like his prized possession forever. Yeah, it hung on his wall for years. Until I told him that was silly because it was fake. <laughs> So I have a plan. And what is that? To make it up to him, I got a vintage wrestler buddy. Now you're going to sign him a wrestling doll. No. I'm actually going to go to the National in Chicago, one of like the largest memorabilia show there is. Hulk Hogan's going to be there and hoping to have Hulk Hogan sign this for him. Yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to get Hulk to sign this? I'm going to use my uh, charm and my good looks. So you're going to stand in line for two hours? If I have to. What do you plan on getting for me? I uh, really haven't thought about it. All right, I got to get to work. <sighs> All right. I'm at a collector's convention in Chicago, and ever since I got here, I've had my ear to the ground in search of Corey's childhood hero. 
I just found out that the Hulk is actually here. So hopefully I can get him to sign this thing and get a selfie with him. Otherwise, Corey will never believe me. Okay, here's the deal with you. I watch you every morning when my wife is making coffee and I'm feeding my chihuahuas and my cats. I watch three or four episodes of your show. <laughs> okay. So I'm a huge fan. Well, thanks, man. And thank you for not firing Chum. So, like, Corey, when he was little, was a huge fan of yours. Okay. okay. A huge fan. But uh, back in the 80s, I didn't have an opportunity to get your autograph, so I took a picture of you. I had a picture of you, and I sort of, like, faked the autograph. There you go. <laughs> it made me a super dad for a minute, but I want to make it up to him. Sure, of course. So, of course. like, it'd be really, really amazing if you could oh, make this yeah. out oh, to Corey. I'd love, love to do that. Let me put this on something. All right. C-O-R-E-Y or Y? C-O-R-E-Y. And when Corey was little, he actually had this wrestler buddy. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. So can I, can I get a selfie? Sure, brother. All right, here we go. All right, man. We're in. There you go. It's so fun. nice to meet you, man. I'm, you I'm too. a huge fan of those. Thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate yes, it. Sir. I literally am going to be the greatest dad in the world to Corey, even though he'll never admit it. <laughs> Hey guys, miss me? Not really. So much. What is this? It is a special gift for you. This is a Hulk Hogan wrestler buddy that I had signed by the man himself. You know, you've played this trick on me before, right? I knew you would believe me. So. That's a look like. Nope, the real deal, I got it done for you. You can even call Steve Grad and have it checked out. I'm trying to make amends from when you were six years old. Okay, well, Dad, I hate to tell you this. I'm 36 years old. I'm really not into it, but I appreciate the idea. I know you're just trying to play cool right now, play the tough guy, but I know you love it. Well, thank you, Dad. Hey, how's it going? Good, man, how are you? Good, what do we got? We have a uh, set of Highland bagpipes autographed by legendary wrestler, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rowdy Roddy Piper, okay. A lot of people say wrestling's fake, but Rowdy Piper often talked about the injury certainly being real. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you jump off a 20-foot anything on anything, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> I have a set of Highland bagpipes autographed by Rowdy Roddy Piper, and I'm asking $7,500. If I'm able to make a deal today, I'll put it in my two-year-old's educational fund. It's pretty cool. So how did you come across these? A really good friend of mine, he was an internationally renowned uh, bagpiper, and he gave them to me. And uh, he, Rowdy Piper was a childhood hero of mine. A few years after I got the bagpipes, he was at a wrestling convention, and we went down and met him, and uh, he actually ended up playing the bagpipes with me, as well as autographing them for me. OK, and that's, is that him signing them? Yeah, this is us here, and uh, you can see he's got a nice, bold signature right across the uh, bagpiping bag. OK. The signature looks completely real. The bagpipes look like they're in decent shape. What are you looking to do with it? I'm looking to sell today, and I'm asking $7,500. And you are proud of these, aren't you? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of them. Let me give you a few things. Sure. This was at a wrestling convention. Yes. Which they have all over the country all the time. You know, athletes, they made a, their living after they really couldn't compete anymore or anything like that, signing autographs. Right. So combine the two, what do we got? I think the bagpipes are probably worth around $1,500. So um, having Rowdy Piper sign $1,500 bagpipes, it's not like having a, a guitar signed by Jimi Hendrix. Right. The expensive bagpipes I've seen, these would be made of ivory. Absolutely. This would be made more of animal skin. And that's why I'm valuing the bagpipe so low. OK. You don't have to agree with my opinion, but I'm going to offer you 300 bucks. I just, uh, we're, we're so far apart. And if uh, a deal's not good for both people, then it's not a good deal. So all right, thanks. Take care, man. Have a good day. So I guess this just wasn't his bag. We weren't able to come to a deal today. I'm just going to keep playing them and uh, let the world keep hearing how great I am at the bagpipes. Morning, sir. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. What do you have here? I have a Hasbro yellow card Kamala action figure. This is pretty cool. Kamala was a wrestler for the WWF. A lot of my friends love wrestling, and they watched it with their kids growing up. And now their kids aren't into wrestling anymore. But guess what? Dad still is. Right. <laughs> 
I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my Hasbro Kamala action figure. I found my Kamala figure at an estate sale. I'm hoping to sell my Kamala figure for $7,500 today. This is pretty cool. So the World Wrestling Federation. I think it's now the WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment, and it is just that entertainment. So this is uh, Kamala. He was a wrestler in the 80s, portrayed by uh, James Harris. He was supposed to be like this cannibalistic headhunter kind of guy, and he would come out with his mask and his spear. He was considered to be a villain, not the most popular of all wrestlers, but he got a chance to wrestle with some of the greatest wrestlers like Hulk Hogan, Undertaker, Andre the Giant. One of the really cool things about Kamala is he is one of very few professional wrestlers to have body slammed Andre the Giant. Probably most wrestlers can't body slam Andre the Giant. That is 100% correct. So the cool thing about this is there's a moon on the belly, and that is originally how he would come out, but for production, they put a star on his belly. They did. It's believed that this maybe would have been like um, early pre-release kind of thing that accidentally got packaged. Actually, this was going to be the original plan for the mass production, but they went with the star instead. Oh, wow. It's a really nice piece. I mean, this is considered to be one of the holy grails for wrestling collectors. This is a piece that any collector would want to have for sure. And what are you looking to do with it? I would like to sell this. And how much are you looking to get? I am hoping to get 7,500. Okay. I mean, the condition of the box is, I don't want to call it beat up, but it's got like some issues with the glue kind of like, it started to separate. But I know these things go for a lot. Even though it looks authentic to me, I need to have someone who knows what they're looking for come down and take a look at it. Fair enough. Give me a few minutes, I'll have someone write down. Absolutely. I look forward to hearing what the expert has to say. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that my figure is 100% authentic. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Very familiar. Yeah. Take a look at it and <laughs> tell me what you think. This is a very, very rare and desirable figure. In the WWF Hasbro line, and maybe in all wrestling toys, this is going to be a top two or three grail for collectors. He was one of those larger than life characters that although he didn't have a big fan base, everybody knew Kamala and his story and it made him relevant in WWF. So in the WWF Hasbro line, it is traditionally known that they would run a set of 24 samples right before production. And those 24 samples would go out to the lawyers or the head of brand. It's kind of like, this is what our production piece is gonna be. Can we get the final signatures on it? That's where this is expected to have come from. And this piece in particular, what's really unique is that they had his signature moon on his belly. And it's speculated that he didn't sign off on the final approval of what was being produced by Hasbro. So the actual production figure was kind of a star, and they were able to produce it without his okay. Wow. What do you think about the condition of this? I noticed like some weird stuff going on with the glue. Does this look original package and everything to you? So um, I do notice there's a little bit veining here and also in here, somewhat consistent. It looks like someone's removed a price sticker at some point. And then uh, I want to take a look at just a couple more things here. And let me pull this out. So basically what I'm seeing here when I look at this is I'm looking for this really smooth texture to the paint, mm -hmm. right? And you can see all that. And then I get into here, and it looks more crude. It looks more rough. So you're saying that someone might have painted over this? Yeah, I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, mm. but unfortunately it's one of those things that you have a fake. and actually not the real figure. Now this is common to find. And some dead giveaways, the sticker residue. Okay. Because my belief is this is a figure that would have never actually made it to the floor of a store. So therefore, why would it have a price sticker on it? Because the store would apply that, not the manufacturer. Okay. Right? And even though this looks like it's done pretty well, the points that you pointed out, Chum, you can tell where there's inconsistencies in the glue throughout it. So it is that holy grail piece. But unfortunately, man, I'm sorry, but mm. you got a fake one. At least now I know. Uh, I appreciate All right, you coming out. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Well, I'll be honest with you, even though I had those few questions in my mind, I literally had no doubt that this was real. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make a deal this time, but I just hope you didn't pay too much for it. I didn't, but All thank right. you anyway, sir. Have a good day. It still looks cool on the shelf. Thank you. It's still a really cool conversation piece for people who see my collection. So 
It, it's not a win, but it's still a win. Hey, how's it going, man? Gentlemen, what is that? Got a 1985 Sports Illustrated magazine featuring Hulk Hogan. It's been autographed by him. Oh, oh yeah, brother. Ah. Also autographed by uh, Ric Flair. Woo! I'm a bad son of a gun. A willing, dealing, pawn shop machine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a 1985 Sports Illustrated magazine autographed by Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. I'm a huge fan of Hulk Hogan. Been a fan my whole life. If I got a big collection of stuff, I'm just trying to unload a couple things. Hoping to get $140 for it today. This is pretty cool, man. What Hulk Hogan did for professional wrestling is pretty unheard of. Before this guy, it was bingo halls in small little stages to this guy selling out the Pontiac Silver Dome with over 100,000 people at it. Yep. Ric Flair, on the other hand, you couldn't have more contrasting characters. You know, you had Hulk Hogan, who was like this larger than life, you know, half man, half superhero kind of guy. He'd tell kids, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, go to school, do your homework, stuff like that. And he was always the good guy and he always won. And then you had Ric Flair, who was the super rich, arrogant, cocky, flamboyant guy who would throw sand in your eyes and hit you with a chair when you weren't looking. You gotta have a villain. What's it say? Nature Boy, Ric Flair. I don't know what this says, something 16 times? Yeah, it's a world champion uh, 16 times. So what are you looking to do with it? Uh, I'm looking to sell it. Any idea what you're looking to get? I'm thinking the combination of the autographs plus the, uh, the rarity of Hulk Hogan being on the Sports Illustrated, I'm looking to get 140 for it. You know, recent years, his fame has dropped, his autograph has dropped. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 75 bucks. Uh, are you willing to do 120? I'll go 100. Listen, from one Hulk fan to another Hulk fan, that's a mega deal. I think you guys are both gonna be happy here. Well, I think uh, through the power of Hulkamania, I'd be okay with that. All right, man. It's Hulk Hogan, baby. Get pumped up. Say it with me one time. Oh yeah, brother. Oh yeah, brother. Meet me over there. Thanks. I was asking 140, was able to get 100, but I'm happy to strike a deal, brother. Hey, how's it going? Hello there. What have we got here? I have a vintage WWE Dude Love shirt and a Mankind mask signed by Mick Foley. That's really cool. Hold on one second. Chubb. Yeah, there's some wrestling stuff over here. What? Wrestling stuff, Mankind, and some guy named Dude Love. Mankind and Dude Love are the same guy, Rick, Mick Foley the most badass hardcore wrestler of all time. But as a character, he was like, dude, love, but he beat people up. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop to try to sell my vintage dude love t-shirt and autographed Mick Foley Mankind mask. I have a huge collection of wrestling memorabilia in my house right now, and I'm just looking to move some items out. I'm hoping to get $200 for the Mankind autograph mask and $300 for the vintage Dude Love shirt. This is awesome. When you take in McFoley, you have to take in all of his personalities. He first wrestled as Cactus Jack in 1986 in a pro wrestling circuit. And then in 1996, he came to the WWE and he rebrands himself into Mankind. And he puts this mask on and he's just this really dark character. You would find him in the boiler room and he had this finishing move called the Mandible Claw. And what do you do? He just ah, put his fingers down your throat and like choke you down to the ground, basically. And that was his submission move. And it was the coolest move ever. OK. So how is this guy this guy? So Dude Love was his wrestling character in high school. When Vince McMahon found out about the character Dude Love, he said, hey, let's try this. It's kind of like an alter ego thing, you know? He was Mankind, and now he's Dude Love. He's Cactus Jack. But each one of these characters was willing to take it further and farther than any other wrestler out there. I'm talking, he jumped off, I think it was a 15-foot ladder, onto a bed of thumbtacks in one wrestling match. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I mean, this guy is one of the best hardcore wrestlers ever. OK. So how much you want for these? For the vintage shirt, I like 300. For the autographed mask, I like 200. OK. The shirt looks a little bit different of a color than the one he would have wore in the ring. He wore one that was a little more blue. Obviously, I think we all know this isn't the one that Mankind would have wore. 
because he had his own hair. <laughs> but it's got his signature on it and it says, have a nice day. That's pretty cool. That's like his catchphrase. OK. Steve's not around. I can't get him to come down and look at that signature. I think I got someone who can come down and take a look at this. You know someone who can look at signatures? Yeah, I know someone that could verify this signature. OK. Can you hang out for a little bit? Absolutely. Hey, right, you want to get a hold of your guy? Yeah, I'll be right back. I have no idea who he's calling. Hey, guys. Look who it is. I <laughs> do, Rick. Mankind, AKA Dude Love himself. OK, I didn't recognize you without the mask. <laughs> and there was none of this gray going on when I was defeating Dwayne The Rock Johnson twice. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I called you in about uh, here. Let me see. So this gentleman here had this really cool Dude Love shirt. Yes. And on this mask, it has your signature. So do you remember anything about these masks at all? The original mask was made out of leather, and it was custom fitted to my face. But nobody ever thought to themselves, hey, what will this leather smell like after it's been perspired in for two straight <laughs> years? It was tough to be <laughs> mankind. Was this something they would have sold at, like, a wrestling event? They would not have been sold at the events, but uh, as a Halloween costume. Oh, OK. So I actually trick-or-treated as myself <laughs> with that mask, <laughs> and nobody knew it was me. <laughs> Do you want to take a look at this signature right here? I thought it was really cool because it says, have a nice day. And I imagine you write that often, but do you? Or is that a little special? I do write, have a nice day. And that's definitely my handwriting. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what it's worth, but I can tell you for a fact that that's my signature. Well, that's pretty cool. And that looks to be in outstanding condition, as does this t-shirt. And I remember the one you would have wore was slightly a different color. It was more of a blue, Much am I right? Much more blue on there. One of the things about this shirt is it was a very limited run because the tie-dye was very expensive to make, and they couldn't promise that every run would look exactly like the original. And that's why this one has far more green in it. I have seen knockoffs, but this looks legit. And this is definitely one of the first dude love shirts. I told you I had a guy that could come down and verify this. So you guys hang out? Well, we've met before, you yeah, know, we yeah. have a cordial relationship here. Yeah. How did you get, like, cool friends instead of your weird ones? Rick, I wore a leather mask and hid out in a boiler room. <laughs> I'm a little weird, too. <laughs> right? You got some cool stuff here. Thanks. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Likewise, thank you for having me here. I actually have one more question. OK. Well, it's kind of a request. Sure. Think you can say it once for me? Can I say it? With gusto. Ow! Have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> and have a nice day. <laughs> That's the one we love, Rick. That's the one we love. Oh, I hope you liked the surprise. That was awesome. So what do you think? About 200 for the pair? Yeah, 200 for the pair. Can you do any better? 210? The fact that I got to meet Mick Foley today, <laughs> That's worth just me keeping it at this point. Well, sorry that backfired on you, Rick. All right, well, anyway, if you change your mind, come back in. OK. Well, have a nice day. <laughs> no, have a nice day. That's what I said. I said, have a nice day. You're too serious. Have a nice day. And then you exit like this. 